So I'll start off by saying if you find these videos useful, can you subscribe? Can you click like? And can you share them with anyone you think might be interested in them? So we're going to go on to the third tutorial on bridging the gap between GCSE and A-level maths. Uh, and topic three is going to be on CERDs. Now there's uh, three different subtopics that we're going to do today. Topic one, arithmetic with CERDs. Topic two, simplifying CERDs. And topic three, rationalising the denominator. Before we go through that though, let's look at what a CERD actually is. Now a CERD is a number that can't be written without some sort of a root sign. So for example, I'll give, a, I'll give an example of something that isn't a CERD. If I say root 4, well that can be written as 2. We don't need a root sign to write root of 4 because it can be written as 2. Therefore, it's not a CERD. However, root 3 can't be written without the square root sign. Therefore, it is a CERD. Just a quick recap of that. Root 4 can be written without a root sign. Therefore, it's not a CERD. Root 3 can't be written without a root sign. Therefore, it is a CERD. And the same actually goes for any root of a prime number. So the root of any prime number is always a CERD. We most commonly see square roots as being what makes a third, but actually it can be cube roots as well. So for example, the cube root of two is also a third. So it doesn't just have to be a square root. So we'll move on now anyway. There are other things that are thirds as well. Uh, too many to list individually, but we'll see that as we go. So moving on to arithmetic with thirds. So thirds behave arithmetically like algebra so for example if i give you 3x plus 2x you tell me that that's 5x which is fine if i tell you 3 root 2 plus 2 root 2 that simplifies to 5 root 2 we think of the third as being an x however different example if i say combine 3x plus 2y you know that that won't simplify any further. Much like 3 root 2 plus 2, and let's do a different third, root 5. Again, that won't combine. They only combine in algebra if they're the same letter. They only combine in thirds if they have the same third part. And that works for both addition and subtraction. Let's have a look now at timesing. And we're going to leave dividing out for now. We'll come back to that later. So inserts, a key fact to learn is that when we times a third by itself, root 2 times root 2, for example, it gives that number. And that's pretty logical because the square root of a number times itself gives the number it was the square root of. That's what square root means. Something that you have to times by itself to get a particular number. So remember that fact. So let's take an example. Let's try and do 2 root 2 times 4 root 2. Now before I do that, I think it's helpful to draw a parallel again with algebra. Because I can think of that as 2x times 4x. And our strategy for doing 2x times 4x is to do 2 times 4 first. Which gives 8. Then concentrate on the x's x squared. Well the same goes with thirds. The 2 times 4 is 8 and then the root 2 times root 2 i.e. the x times x gives root 2 squared which we just discovered to be 2 so that's equal to 16. Let's do another. Let's do 5 root 6 times minus 3 root 6. So drawn the same analogy as before the same parallel with algebra 5 times minus 3 is minus 15 and root 6 times root 6 is just 6. And we see that that's equal to 15 times 6. Negative, which is negative 90. So pretty straightforward there. Let's do one more example. Let's do 2 plus root 3 times 4 plus 3 root 3. So to do that, we'll tackle it just like a normal question. So we've got 2 times 4 which is 8, 
plus and from the rules we just learned that becomes 6 root 3 plus 4 root 3 and here's the challenging one 3 times root 3 squared so 3 times 3 which is 9 so that ends up being equal to 17 plus 10 root 3 so that's that so let's move on to the next section which is simplifying thirds. so we're going to stick with the theme of multiplying thirds. I'm going to try and do root 2 times root 3 now we saw that root 2 plus root 3 um, we couldn't simplify any further let's see what the calculator here tells us root 2 times root 3 and gives us root 6 so possibly there's a pattern here let's try a different one root 7 times root 2 if the same pattern holds surely we should get root 14 root 7 times root 2 does indeed give root 14 let's try it with something else let's say root 6 times root 8 and that's equal to hopefully root 48 but we don't get that we get 4 root 3 so that answer didn't come out as expected however if I just type in the calculator root 48 then press equals I see that it is 4 root 3 equals root 48 however this form here is called simplified third form and what we're going to do now is look at what simplified third form actually is so let's start by looking at this example of root 48 which we saw wasn't in simplified third form but is equivalent to 4 root 3 which is simplified third form so the key to getting something in simplified third form is to break the third up into prime factors so root 48 we can rewrite as root 6 times root 8 and if we if we've got prime numbers in front of us now then we're done we haven't because root 6 will break down further into root 3 times root 2 so there's our root 6 and root 8 will break down into root 4 root 2 so this here is our root 6 and this here is our root 8 now what I would do at this point is scan through it and maybe reorder some terms so I can see if I write them and gather up like terms I've got root 2 root 2 root 3 root 4 well I actually know that root 2 times root 2 makes 2 then there's a root 3 and I know the square root of 4 is also 2 therefore that becomes 4 root 3 overall and there's our answer root 48 is 4 root 3 as we expected so now let's do a different example again let's say that the example was to add together root 48 plus root 75 now we know we can't add those thirds together as they are now because they have to be the same third part to be able to combine them but what we can do is simplify them then see if it leads to having the same third part so root 48 I did it one way just above I'm going to do it a different way now a more efficient way and um, because I know root 48 is root 16 times root 3 16 times 3 is 48 and the reason I've chosen this is because the square number 16 is a square number so I know the answer to that is just 4 um, plus and 75 if I do the same root 25 nice square number root 3 so root 16 is 4 root 25 is 5 which gives 9 root 3 and the beauty of this is you can just check it in your calculator so root 48 plus root 75 equals 9 root 3 as required so that's simplified third form for you breaking it down to a point at which it becomes uh, no longer breakable down anymore but I just want to show you one example that's a little bit of an exception so if I try and break down root 90 I get root 9 root 10 and I know that root 9 is 3 so I can just write 3 there, which gives 3 root 10, and 10 will break down into root 2 and root 5. So it looks like we've got it as simple as it'll go. So let's do, uh, let's do root 90 on the calculator. 
see if the calculator gives us the answer we want back. The calculator gives back 3 root 10. And actually that's correct. 3 root 2 root 5 isn't considered to be simpler than 3 root 10. If there's two separate thirds as a product remain at the end, we should combine them into one term. And that's seen as being simpler than breaking them down further. Both answers are equivalent, but in an exam, this answer is considered to be more right than 3 root 2 root 5. So remember, if you're left with two different thirds at the end, times together, combine them. And that's it really for simplifying thirds. Let's move on now to rationalising the denominator of thirds. So I'll give an example of a third with an irrational denominator. Now, a third is said to have an irrational denominator if a third appears on the denominator. When you get to sixth form, you'll learn more about what irrational and rational numbers are. But for now, just take it for granted that when there's a third on the denominator, it's said to be irrational. And someone decided one day that irrational denominators were bad. They decided it was bad presentation. So we don't like irrational denominators, we want to change them. The way we can do that is timesing by one, but in a really clever way. So for example, two thirds, if I times by one in a really clever way, i.e. two divided by two, times the top by two and the bottom by two, we're just timesing by one there, two over two is one. We get an exactly equivalent number, which is presented a bit differently. That's what we're going to do with this third now. We're going to times by one in a really clever way to get something that's exactly the same value but looks a bit different. So to undo the third part on the bottom, I'm going to times it by itself. And to make up for the fact that I've times the bottom by root two, I'm going to times the top by root two as well. So convince yourself that I'm just timesing by the number one here, but in this really clever way, that's going to represent the third. So the top becomes eight root two. The bottom becomes root 2 times root 2, which is 2. And then simplifying that, so think of it as saying 8x over 2. Well, that would be 4x. So 8 root 2 over 2 is 4 root 2. And we can check this on a calculator. So if we just type in the original question, 8 over root 2, we see that it's 4 root 2. So we can make them more difficult. How about, let's say, root 72 divided by root, I don't know, 48. So what we can do here is just like above, we can times by the third part on the bottom, root 48 over root 48. But I think we can do better than that. I think we can simplify this before we go any further. So I know that root 72, getting into simplified third form, is root 36 root 2, and root 48, take out a nice square number on that one as well, root 16, root 3. That gives me 6 root 2 on top, and 4 root 3 on the denominator. The 6 over 4 cancels to 3 over 2. And we've got something now, and a lot easier looking, to rationalise the denominator for. So now the third part on the bottom that I don't want is just the root 3. So all I'm going to do is times by a fraction made up of the numerator and the denominator of the third part that I don't want. So the only bit I don't want is this root 3. So that's the bit I'm going to get rid of by timesing by 1, i.e. root 3 over root 3, in this really clever way. So the top becomes 3 root 2 root 3, and the bottom becomes 2 times 3, which is 6. So simplifying that, we get 3 over 6, which is a half. Then root 2 times root 3. If we combine the thirds as we did above, and the example's just um, visible at the top of the screen there, we end up with root 6. And equally acceptable is the answer root 6 over 2. So from here... We're going to now move on to look at a different type of rationalising the denominator question. One where there's two terms on the bottom. So we're really pushing the boundaries here. So say that I asked you to rationalise the denominator for this one here. 8 over 2 plus root 3. Now you might be forgiven for thinking 
that timesing by root 3 over root 3 gives you a rational denominator because that's what we did before. We identified the part of the third we didn't want, i.e. that root 3. We times by 1 in this clever way to try and get rid of it. So let's see if that happens. So I get 8 root 3 on top. But on the bottom, timesing all of that by root 3, I get 2 root 3 plus 3. The third part is still there. I haven't got rid of it. So we're going to have to do something slightly differently in these cases. So what I'm actually going to do here, when you get ones like this, what you need to do is times by what's called the conjugate of the third, i.e. the third part, just with the sign changed. So 2 minus root 3 over 2 minus root 3. So we take the third part and just change its sign and multiply by that over itself. And let's see what that does. So we get on the top 16, take away 8 root 3. And on the bottom, double brackets. So we get 4, 2 times 2. Take 2 root 3, add 2 root 3, take 3. And notice, because we've times by the conjugate, these middle terms cancel, we get a plus 2 root 3, but we also get a minus 2 root 3 as well. So they cancel to leave no third on the denominator. So it just becomes 16 minus 8 root 3 over 1, but we don't write another 1. Let's just check on the calculator. So putting the original question in, which was 8 over 2 plus root 3, which is equal to 16 minus 8 root 3, as we found. So that's thirds for you, really. That's all you can be asked to do with uh, different thirds. So what I'm going to suggest now, if you get on with the thirds worksheet, to go through every question and just refer back to this video if you need to. So everything on the question now is doable based on what we covered in this video. All the full work solutions are available for the sheet, but this really is a necessary skill to be good at when you start A-level.